It feels like a dream, almost. Jane awakened from the memory to find himself standing in a crowded cityscape. Something bothers Jane about his dream from a moment ago. It felt as though he should have had some sort of emotional response to the girl. The thought is gone as quickly as it had come, and Jane's face turns cold as he scans. Can humanity really exist amid such disorder and chaos? He isn't in a district amid the lower levels of... Wait, what did I do? Fought that up. He is in a district amid the lower levels of Kagatsuchi, a place called Ronin Gai. Bridges packed with structures span the valley. They creak and sway in the wind that wisps through the various banners and flags the residents have chosen to fly. The town's architecture is unusual, reminiscent of the that of the Ikariga Fagan. Eh, got so far, fight it up. <coughs> the town's architecture is unusual, reminiscent of that of the Ikariga Federation, which was destroyed in its civil war with the Librarium two years prior. The streets are empty. Why? Jin makes his way through the town, his senses on a high alert. People live here, clearly, but he doesn't spot a soul. He can feel the presence, though, from hidden vantage points within buildings and behind trees from innumerable... I need to calm down. Anyway. He can feel the presence, though, from hidden vantage points within buildings and behind trees from innumerable corners and just out of sight. He feels the fear and hatred Ned needling at his back. Huh. I see. So this is where the refugees from Ikaraga have crawled away to. After their defeat two years ago, the residents of Ikaraga Federation probably ended up here in Kagasuchi. Jin knows the events of the war all too well. He played a pivotal role in the conflict. Having brought the rebel leader, Tenojo, to his re knees, it was no stretch to say that Jin was personally responsible for the fall of Ikaga. It was his wartime valor that earned him the nickname, the Hero of Ikaraga. Jin himself puts no stock in such rubberly. I'm tempted to turn this hovel into a glacier, just to teach you some manners. Jin was fed up with their incessant hidden staring and their cowardice. He reached out for his sword at that very moment. <laughs> Lo, dastardly Jin Kisaragi from the equally dastardly NOL. Your day of woe is upon you! What the hell? Gaze upon this scar, varlet! I am none other than Bang Shishigami, survivor of the Ikaraga Massacre, and he who shall deliver you unto justice! Who? Oh, right. That coward from two years ago. I did flee the castle, yes, but only at my master's insistence to see our kinsmen to safety. You were the cowards that day! destroying our village and cutting down an outnumbered hero. I have never forgotten your crimes, or how our master must have suffered in his final moments. Such thoughts cannot be stifled, even for a moment! Get out of my way. I haven't the time to listen to you babble on. That I cannot do! This is a meeting ordained by fate, and I will make it count! Even if I must break my master's dying wish, I must end your life here and now! As you go to your doom, remember, I am the Avenger of Ikaraga, who fights for love and justice! Bang Shishigami! On guard! That's right, we ran into Bang, the loud bastard. It almost puts me to shape. <laughs> almost. It's hard to do that. Oh god, I need to start flubbing wars. <laughs> Narrator voice does not work well with my brain. Anyway. I probably will change back. The will baited time. Okay, how do I fight with it? Uh, Rebel 1. Action! Okay, that was one. Uh, that didn't work. I don't know if I was I'm just winging it. Not enough dialogue that doesn't work for you. Get him! Not tonight. Oh my! Die! Die! Yeah, I'm just gonna upload that. 
Give me a second. Ah! <coughs> Impossible! Deluded fool. Boss! Pull yourself together! How dare you, Jin Kisaragi! We'll avenge you, boss! Count on it! Stand back. This is my stage. And you guys don't stand a chance. I love the fact that the voice in the text is completely opposite. <laughs> stand back, my loyal Alpha Batai subordinate. This is my moment. You guys don't chance. So stand a chance against the one who spams Ice Car so thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dialogue's better than the fucking voice of Boss! Struggling through the pain, Bang takes hold of his nearest comrade and tries to lift himself to his feet. But his men hold him down, gently, as befits a warrior of love and justice. Jen looks upon the defeated ninja with equal parts arrogance and boredom. Stay on the ground where you belong, old man. Killing you isn't worth the mess. Jin stays this as he walks away, not caring if they even hear him. To Jin, they cease to exist. The pain mumbling behind him barely registers. Oh, uh, master, please forgive me. None of it matters to Jin. I've wasted too much time on pointless crap. I need to get to the top of Kagutsuchi, and soon. Jin's eyes follow his thoughts up to the top of the mountain and the NOL branch that resides the report. From his vantage point down in Ronin Guy, he's nothing more than a hazy speck. Nonetheless, uh, the mere thought of what awaits him in its halls gave Jin a chill of excitement. <laughs> almost. Almost there. We'll meet once again, brother. The fingertips of his silk and gloves grazed the tip of his sword ever so slightly. His face twisted into a manic smile, but his eyes never thought. That is the root look of a monster. Novus Orvis Librarium, Kegasuchi Branch, inside the cathedral. Excuse me, soldier. I'm Captain Hazama with the Intelligence Department, here on business from NOL Headquarters, not that you asked. But would you mind terribly if I borrowed your balcony for a while? I was told to expect you, sir. Please, follow me. I'll lead you up there. Much obliged. Don't mention it, Captain. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Goodness, no. I'd hate to trouble you any more than I already am. Though you did offer, so... Okay, look. I'm dealing with some pretty hush-hush stuff here. Can you make sure nobody comes up while I'm there? Yes, sir. So, this is the elevator, I take it? Yes, Captain. It's the only one up to the roof. Excellent. I think I can take it from here, so why don't you head on back to your post? But, sir, I... Hush-hush, remember. I'm afraid I must insist. Uh, right then. If you need anything else, Captain, just, uh, let me know. Oh, but of course. And here we are, finally. Might as well have taken the stairs. Ah, it's finally time to reclaim what's rightfully mine. In a garden blessedly free of, free, free of humans, the fabric of space and time begins to tear. A young girl in a black dress materializes out of thin air, as if such acts are commonplace. No surprise that because for her, they are. The girl radiates experience and pose that... Fuck. Uh, okay, I'm gonna ditch this voice in a minute. The girl radiates experience and poise that stretches age beyond what her young body could have accumulated. She is a vampire and she has ne seen more of history than any man alive. Her name is Rachel Alucard. The same, down to the very blades of grass. So you've been here before, princess? How come you never told us? These questions are posted. Nah, for fuck's sake. 
Ah, I need to sit down at least calm down. These questions are posed by the cat-shaped umbrella and the odd bat-like creature that have materialized with Rachel. The umbrella is Nago, the bat gay. They're Rachel's steadfast, they're chatty familiars. Rachel silences them with a heavy leaded glance and begins scanning the area. Yes, I have been here a number of times, though not for many a year. Of course, my definition of many a year would probably be considered excessive by human standards. What do you mean, Princess? Oh, hush, you noisy little imp! Your sense of decorum is as tiny as your wings! Decorum? Oh, you mean her coming here had something to do with a mu- No! Oh! Ow! That hurt, Princess! Why'd you have to hit me, too? Nature abhors a gossip. Now silence. Something is amiss. I can feel it. Rachel's dainty features curl into the tiniest of frowns as she peers into the sky. The sky is cloudless and clear, in defiance of Rachel's prediction, but she continues to frown, as though looking upon a calamitous star. He finally graces us with his presence. Oh, lucky day. He? He who, huh, princess? He who? Hm. But this will hardly do. Nago! Gee, we're leaving. What the hell, rabbit? You don't just appear in front of people. You trying to scare the shit out of me? A thousand pardons for you and your excrement both. I thought we might stop by to look upon the insensed face of yours one last time. Sadly, you have seemed to pick up a spark of self-awareness somewhere. It rather ruins the effect. Party freaking har. So what are you really here for, huh? Jeez, you and my master both. Bunch of friggin' creepers, the lot of you. Do try to housebreak your ego. It's not as if I'll come rushing forth every time you acquire a boo-boo. You tell him, princess! Yeah, run the... the... the crud edge! Shut your pie holes, you damn stuffed toys! Like I was saying before, why the hell are you here? And don't tell me you came to say hi, cause I ain't buying it. No, truly. We came to look upon the intellectual wasteland which is your face, Ragnar. It's still as barbaric as ever, I'm happy to see. <sighs> Come on, talk like normal people for once. Really, must I spell everything out for you? I knew you were dense, but at this rate I wonder how you remember to breathe. What? What? Why are you just standing there like some overpriced ball joint doll? <sighs> the hell did I do now? I'm just disappointed in you, that's all. I doubt you care. Huh? Oh, run along. Your incessant bleating is setting my skull abuzz. One of these days, Rabbit. One of these days, you'll get yours. <laughs> I do look forward to that. Are you quite sure you have the time to stand around grunting unenforceable threats? You were on a mission, were you not? Oh, hell, you're right. I gotta take care of some shit. Well then, Tempest Fugit, Ragna. The hell'd you call me? Oh, just leave my presence ere your one remaining brain cell perishes from loneliness and overwork. I'm going, I'm going. Keep your gothy little petticoats on. A tiny smile tugs at the corner of Rachel's lips, but only once Ragnar turns away. As the red-jacketed figure disappears from view, Rachel lets out a small sigh. You're safely away. For now, at least. Greetings, pale thespian. I trust you're... off book? Huh. It's you. What do you want? Nothing. I merely wanted to gaze upon the face of one who yearns to rewrite fate. Well, such as it is. You are not welcome upon this stage. Do your gazing from the audience, and observe my simple blocking. Your simple blocking? I enter. I slaughter the Dark One. I sever the link. You are off book. Running through the same tired dialogue now, that you do every time. A violent wind tears through the space between them as they stand off. 
Rachel summons a counterwind and sits in a pocket of beclammed air, lest the gods play havoc with her long, elegant hair. I wonder, how many times will this make? How many more times do you buffoons intend to perform this doggerel? <laughs> Rachel's rhetorical questions are met with silence. Not that the figure opposite her would have answered anyway. She gazes into the distance, murmuring to the wind itself. The azure. It is a thread that weaves all fates together. Take up the needle to that thread, and the world is yours to stitch as you desire. The prerogative of a creator. Of a god. God? <laughs> Don't be melodramatic. The azure is a method to define what we perceive as real. Nothing more. Need I remind you that it was you humans who lusted so mightily for that mere method? You tried to wrest control from your deities like a hunter of greedy, grasping apes. But yes, by all means, I'm the melodramatic one. Thanks to you, I haven't been counted among humans for some time now. Or had you forgotten? Thanks to me, you say? The imposing figure stalks past the smirking girl. This conversation serves no purpose. I'm leaving. Do, by all means. That blank visage of yours tires me further by the minute. I will destroy the Dark One, period. Don't you dare interfere. That decision isn't yours to make, or mine. <laughs> Emitting an aura of disdain that would bring most mortals to their knees, the shadowy form marches swiftly into the distance. Rachel drops her defenses as she watches him go. The wind sweeps up the ends of her hair and sets it to dance. How much more? But the wind steals her whispered words. Ragnar continues his journey up the side of Kagatsuchi. Eventually, he happens upon the district known as Orient Town. He walks the busy streets awash in the colour and light from the bright lanterns and brighter buildings. Happening little place, this Orient Town. Ragnar looks around, nursing a guarded smirk. Ragnar's a man who places a high value on his personal space. That's how he's lived long enough to be categorised as an SS-class criminal in the first place. Probably shouldn't stay here too long. Is that a cat I hear? I'm starving down here. Uh, yeah. Okay, scratch that. Not a cat. Ragnar stops in his tracks and turns around. He ducks into an alleyway in search of whoever was speaking and promptly trips over something. So hungry. Oh, can't move. Think I'm gonna die. Their complaints waft up from the obstacle at Ragnar's feet. Whatever this is, I don't got time for it. Ragnar makes an about face and heads out of the alley. Hey! How come you're ignoring me? Meow! The hitherto starving creature leaps up from death's door, almost cackling Ragnar. Of me, damn it! Come on, white guy, be a pal. Buy me some omnoms, yeah? And I'm gonna do that. Why exactly? Cause Tao's tummy is all rumbly and empty, but I don't have any money. Capitalism's a drag. Meow. Great, a flea-bitten freeloader. Just my luck. Oh, a white guy's being all food stingy. Poor meow, nourished Tao. I'll just have to die, right? On ship. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Ah, meow! Huh? <laughs> Let go of me, meow tard! Meow tard? That's my shtick! We're gonna settle this with a duel! Seriously? If Tao wins, you gotta treat me to food. And if Tao loses, then you gotta treat me to food! That's the same damn thing either way! one for listening, are you? 
Hey, that's my shit. <laughs> Tao four wall, stop breaking it. <laughs> I gotta love Tao's dialogue, it's the fucking best. Okay, let's do this. How hard can it be, right? The will paid its turning. Oh, okay. Rebel one. Action! I like this game, I have a lot more than I think about it. This is actually what was my first play. So, the combat is too hard to remember. Inferno Divider! Hey, get back here. Ah! Stop it. Stay and die. Ta da. Thanks for making me waste my time with this pointless crap. I'm a caca of my word. Tao will let you buy me some food, just like we agreed to. Hey, I didn't agree to jack shit. Jeez, I guess I can't leave you here all hungry like. I mean, I did just kick your ass up and down the street. Fine, come on, we'll get some grub. Kinda hungry myself. The street corner restaurant at Orient Town. Ragnar Tao sit at a table meant for eight. It's covered from end to end with a multitude of dishes. Ragnar begins to stuff his face, anxious to clear the plates and be on his way. I got places to be, so eat fast, yeah? Aye aye, good guy! You can count on Tao! Where's she putting it all? This is gonna be friggin' expensive. So, uh, what's your name again? Town Cha Cha or something? Why were you begging for food in a random alley? Can't you just eat at home, wherever that is? Ho oh, ho! Tao was hoping you'd ask! Oh, it's a long and sad tale. Which I've just so happened to practice telling in the mirror. <laughs> <sighs> Tao lives in the Kaka village. Everybody who lives there looks like Tao. Cool, right? <laughs> but. During which she got hungry and passed the hell out. And scene! Meow! Pro tip, that ain't a good thing. So, how's this mission of yours work, huh? Kaka Village needs food money. So Tao decided to become one of those bad guy catching thingies. So she can earn tons and tons of mula! You know, a vigilante! Or is it a vigilante? Stop, please. It's vigilante. Cal stops stuffing her face with food for a moment and pulls out a rumpled piece of paper. Out of her coat. Ragnar's mother smooths it out to get a closer look. It's a wanted poster issued by the NOL. God, check out the mug on this train wreck. Who's the uggo? The super evil hiss hiss class criminal! Ragnar the Blood Bridge! Meow! <coughs> you okay, good guy? You can't go breathing food! Trust me! Tried. No, it's not that. This is supposed to be me? Would it have killed him to hire a better artist? Come on, I look like friggin' Quasimodo. And what the hell's a blood fridge supposed to be? Ragnar says the poster back on the table. If he held it any longer, he's li liable to rip it to shreds. Oh, that one! Yeah, uh, and that one! Yeah! What the? Right away, miss! Wait a sec, what the hell did you just order? You know what? Let's just make this easy. Just bring Tao three of every 
everything on the menu. Oh, and if the cooks brought any snacks in from home, I'll take those too. Three of everything? Have you lost your damn mind? But I'm still hungry! And I'm still not made of money. You just ordered everything in a two-block radius, and there's no way I can pay for it all, you dig? Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, but did you just say you no can pay? Crap! I almost certain that's what you say, sir. What? No! I, I meant it, um, metaphorically. <laughs> yeah. This wanted poster. It's Ragnar the Blood Edge. Ragnar the Blood Edge? AKA the Grim Reaper? Wait, he's here? In this restaurant? And one of those great video game ironies, it would seem every other diner in the place is a vigilante out for Ragnar's head. They're all vigilantes. Of course they are. Friggin' course. Hey, that guy over there? He looks an awful lot like him. Yeah, he's got the same white hair and everything. Way less ugly than the guy in the poster, though. Come on, I just ate. I'm not fighting the whole damn dinner crowd. Oops, a daisy. Meow. Ragnar hoist Tower Cock over his shoulder, her mouth crowded with meat buns. Time to go! And work with me here. Do you want to get caught? It's a dining dash up to arm to arm. They're chasing us. Surprise, surprise. Hey, Deadweight, a little help here. Keep running, then onward to Kaka Village. Like I even know where it is. When you see a bunch of people that look like Tao, you're there. Oh, and they'll take you in for sure, cause you smell like food. Whatever, just point the damn way, yeah? Will do! Set a course for 